In today's video, we're going to draw and paint a simple watercolour flower. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle. On this channel, we do all things watercolour, as well as lots of drawing tutorials, even a bit of mixed media and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. It's completely free. Now, lots of you who have joined me recently on the channel have joined through drawing videos. So I thought this week we'd do something really simple, really easy for beginners. We're gonna paint a flower, but I'm also going to take you through the drawing stage. Now, this is gonna be so simple and I'm gonna break everything down step by step so you can follow along with me if you would like to. So let's get started, first of all, with our drawing. I've got a board of Fabriano Artistico watercolour paper here, which I've stretched. It's smaller than my usual size and it's not completely square. Now, normally I show you how to scale up photographs, but um, this one went a bit over the top. No, this is larger than the paper. So we're gonna have a look at how this is going to fit onto my paper. So the paper is slightly oblong, so do I want it sort of, you know, vertical or horizontal? Let's have a look. So I've got a little piece of scrap paper here. It's got some printing on because it's um, left over from some dressmaking pattern paper. And what I want to do is just check the height versus the width of this flower. So it looks like it's perfectly circular, but um, let's see if it is. So I'm going to check the widest point here. Just stick a little mark like that, and then we'll just check it the other way round. OK, so it's a tiny bit wider than it is taller hoping you can see the bottom of the uh, the piece of paper there. So a little bit wider than it is taller. The other thing I want to check is how high up the centre is. It looks about central, you know, left to right. We look like we're face onto it, but I just want to check how central it is. Um, let's just check here. So if we go sort of um, top to bottom of flower and then we mark the centre point in. So let's get rid of all the other stuff so it's not distracting. So this is the bottom and this is the top. Let's fold it in half at that centre point. Oh, look at that. It's very close. So it's very slightly closer to the bottom than the top. So what I'm going to start by doing is I'm just going to go corner to corner here and find the centre of my paper. Now with something like a landscape, it's not a good idea to put your central point dead centre, but it's fine for a single flower like this. So where those two lines cross, which is about there, that's the centre. So I'm just going to go down a tiny bit. So I'm going to aim to have the centre of my flower down here. Now we know the flower is wider than it is tall. So I'm just going to sort of um, think about making a mark just here and here so we don't go all the way off. Got another piece of paper here, so let's just measure this again. I just find it much easier using a scrap of paper like this than actually measuring with a ruler because anything with numbers on, I just end up getting in a muddle and um, I'm likely to do the math wrong or forget. So I'm just going to go out there. So from the point we've decided is the center. I just want to go out a little bit further because we did notice that our flower was wider than it was tall. And this has given me now a nice place to put the flower in. So I've got my center is going to be here and I know where I can take the flower to so that it doesn't go off the edges of the paper. I've just noticed I've been um, using a pencil I grabbed here that I was actually using to draw on um, dressmaking pattern paper. I don't want an H pencil. I want something much softer to draw the petals with. So let's take a look at how our flower is constructed. It's got these individual large petals here, each of which seems to have you know, pretty much a dip in the centre and crinkly edges. There appear to be six of them. We've got one, two, three, and then the same above. Maybe there's seven actually. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so there's actually seven overall. Important to count your petals and see what you're dealing with. Now, I won't be drawing any of these orange shapes. We need that to work wet into wet to get those lovely soft edges. And there's always a chance that pencil could be left behind. And because yellows tend to be somewhat opaque pigments, I think if I draw that, it could get left behind. So I'm going to draw the petal shapes. I'm also going to draw this central shape here. And I'm going to start by drawing almost a, a sort of an oval around the outside to give me an area to place the petals. So I've got my circle guideline. You see how it's just allowing me to make sure that I stay in the right place. I'm going to get an idea of the shape of these petals. 
Don't worry initially about getting all those crinkly edges. You just need to make sure that things are in the right place first of all. So I'm going to get my petal shapes in like this, using that outside shape just as a rough guideline. It doesn't need to be so accurate that the flower's mother will recognize it in a crowd. We're just getting an idea of the shape of the flower. Got my rough outline shape. Now I'm going to draw that central part and it actually somewhat follows the shape of the petals by going into these little outward sort of scoops, which is going to make it look more realistic. And then we've got these little bits that come in. What I'm going to do now is go around each petal and just draw it more carefully and adjust the edges, make sure I've got it how I like it and I will also be erasing any guidelines. Now you'll notice that I'm substantially changing the shape of these as I look more closely at each one. So those first marks were just, you know, an idea of where I wanted things to go. Now I'm changing everything, making it look more realistic and removing these guidelines. I'm using an 8B pencil here. That's mostly so that you can see on YouTube. I don't want you to take your pencil lines as dark as mine. You're probably better using something between a 2 and a 4B. Now, before we start painting, I'm going to choose colours. This is something I do at the start of every painting. It's a really good idea to work within quite a small palette. Of course, if you absolutely have to, you can add another colour as you go along. But I like to start with specific colours, even if I don't stick to that 100%. So let's choose the colours we're going to use. So let's have a swatch of some colours. I'll also give you some alternatives. So the main colour we have is yellow. I'm using this cobble yellow from Jackman's. Basically here you're looking at something that's just a touch warmer than a lemon. A cadmium yellow light or an aerolean will also do the trick. I've got some cadmium orange here. This is also a Jackman's colour. I just find it's uh, quite useful to have them in these little pots, but you can use pans or tubes or anything at all. So we've got this nice orange here. You want one that's strong enough because it's going to be slightly diluted as it hits that yellow anyhow. I've got a little smidgen here of sepia. This is a Talon's Rembrandt colour. If you have my Jackman's paints, then Winter Bark is a similar colour. Otherwise, you can get any warm brown and cool it down with the addition of some blue. For instance, burnt umber could be mixed with a little bit of cobalt or ultramarine. Those purplish blues work the best. And you see it'll not only do the dark centre of the flower, but it'll do the little dried bits that are surrounding as well if we water it down. I want a shadow colour for the petals. I'm using Davies Grey. Davies Grey is a very good colour for botanicals. It's a slightly delicate greenish grey. We're going to use this for our shadows. You could also use my Petal Shadow colour from Jackman's. If you don't have any of those, I suggest you mix yourself a grey using a blue with perhaps a touch of this yellow and a touch of pink. Lastly, there's a little green in the centre of our flower. I'm actually going to use a watercolour pencil because it's going to help me to get some nice sharp shapes. So we're going to start our painting now. One thing beginners often do wrong is they end up with everything just being wet and running here, running there. Of course, some of the areas will need to be wet as we paint into them. So it's a matter of looking at your flower and considering what you want for hard edges, crisp edges, and what you want for soft edges. And of course, we'll start with working from light to dark. The first thing I'm going to paint is those really light areas, almost like dried up bits of leaf. We're going to keep them nice and light because they're going to have darks next to them later on. I'm just simply going to paint those in. There's a little graphite pencil still on there. As I said, I don't want you to draw quite as darkly as me, but really in this sort of dried up colour, it won't matter at all. Now I'm ready to paint. It's really important to note that this little bit I painted just now, there's actually been about 45 minutes gap where I went off. I'm actually baking some bread today and messed around with the bread. It's important to let each part dry. So this part is dry now. I'm going to start by painting the petals. Now it's important that the outsides of the petals have these crisp edges. You see them here and some of them are defined by shadow on the other side. So what I'll do is I'll paint a full petal and then I'll paint another one maybe over here 
and I'll leave gaps so that I'm not painting one petal directly when the one next to it is wet, otherwise one will run into another. But within the inside of each petal, everything's soft. So we need to get that softness in. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to paint as much of the variation, the shadows, everything in one go whilst the petals wet. Now, if you're living in an area that's really, really hot and humid and you don't have the time to do that, what you need to do is just do the yellow and the orange, let it dry and then re-wet the whole petal, being careful not to drag the orange right the way across. So in other words, wet in clean water, maybe clean water here and here just so that you don't drag the dark up into the light. And then you can work on top and place the shadows on top. It's possible to re-wet the whole thing without everything running. But it's winter here, so I'm gonna try and do things as quickly as possible. I'm also gonna use more than one brush. I've got this large brush for applying my yellow. I've got smaller brushes here in order to put the colors on. I've also got my watercolor pencil and I've given it a good sharp and so it's nice and sharp. So what you notice is that we have yellow from here to here. There's some orange here, but a little gap of yellow is left there. We've also got shadows and we've got a little bit of green just around the edge here. So let's see what we can get done in one pass. I've also got some paper towel. This will enable me to control any excess water by dabbing my paintbrush onto the towel. And I'm gonna start here with my yellow. I'm going to do this petal here. Notice I'm using a very large brush that will enable me to get across the area easily. And I think as I come up, I'm gonna add a bit more water because petals tend to be more transparent towards the outer edges. This is a very strong color. It's a myth to think that more pigment always makes a brighter color because you need to get that white of the paper coming through. We need to work quickly so that we can go into this petal whilst it's still wet. Speed is a little more important than 100% accuracy here. I'm gonna go in with orange now. It's important that this paint is quite dry. It doesn't matter if it's tube paint or pan paint, just don't put too much water with it. I'm gonna go in here and get that section there of orange. Now I do want this orange to bleed up and out, so I'm gonna put a little more water along this edge here. This will enable it to bleed along that side. Cleaning my paintbrush and then straight in with a little shadow and the shadow here comes out. Yes, that's too strong there. We'll deal with that in a moment. I'm gonna clean and dry my brush. That will enable me to lift out some pigment. Can I just briefly interject and ask, have you pressed the like button yet? Have you clicked that thumbs up for me? Clicking like, sharing, subscribing, or leaving me a nice comment. Make sure it's a nice one, not a nasty one. That'll help YouTube to push this video out to more people, and I can help more people learn to paint and draw. It also supports the channel, which helps me to make more free videos like this one. It's really important not to just spread this shadow color literally over everything. So I'm gonna clean and dry my brush when I need to. I can lift more color out. Also important not to work on this too long. I've got too much of a hard edge down here on this yellow part, so I'm gonna add a little clean water the other side of that. That should bleed now into the orange. Just using my brush to control, starting to, it's starting to go the other way there. Let's put a little bit more yellow in and see if we can deal with that. There we are. Obviously the orange was so wet, it was starting to bleed into the yellow, not the other way around. That's the fun of watercolor painting. So I'm just gonna keep adjusting this bit till I get it doing what I want. Lifting some color out there and I'll go in again with that yellow. There we go, now it's working. Remember, wetter areas will always bleed into drier areas. But notice I'm not working up here anymore because that's all dry. I don't want to mess around with that. Always better to go in with a second layer than mess around with damp paint if you're not sure what you're doing. I'm gonna go in now with my watercolor pencil and just work around this inner edge. Watercolor pencil is a little safer. You can do this when the paint is partially dry. It's also really good for getting any lines that you want. There's a definite hint of a central line here. I'm just gonna take this up like so. It's kind of dragged the paint up. I'm okay with that. And at this point, I'm going to let that dry and I'll be sure to work on a petal that's away from that one and not go directly next to it. 
So it's starting to build up quite nicely now. Do forgive these scratches on my hands. Um, Mr. Gimlet and I have had some philosophical disagreements about how many sachets of cat food he should have a day. Gimlet believes he should have between uh, 10 and 20, whereas I think he should have, you know, four or five and I, I did mention that the vet has said he's getting a little chonky but um, I was then accused of you know fat shaming and um, it all went downhill after that and um, I'm afraid Gimlet did resort to violence to solve his problems as um, as cats sometimes do. I'm not quite sure who won, certainly physically um, he won the encounter but he's still not getting as much cat food as he would like. Basically, every moment he's awake, he would like to be eating. And um, I am resisting allowing him to do this. Now, it is actually my birthday today. Um, when you're watching this, it won't be my birthday, of course, because this is the past and you'll be watching this in the future. But I'm actually filming this on my birthday. So there you go. Shows you how much I love you all. Now, notice here, this petal I painted just now is behind the one in front and so it's important when you get something you see this one's behind this one here so this one's behind this one it's in front of this one so where it goes behind that's where we want to get our shadow going on don't be afraid to go fairly dark the main thing with the shadow is not that you shouldn't go dark with it because it's a flower but it's just that you should be careful not to spread it across and kind of muddy up all of your colors so we're taking this shadow here of course, some of them have more shadow on than others. And I can use this dark green pencil to start defining these edges here. It takes a little bit of rubbing to produce enough pigment. If you're interested in the brands and the colors and things, I'll leave them all in the video description. And watercolor pencils really are excellent, as you can see for botanical work. I'll get on and paint the other petals now, but I will of course be allowing them all to dry now because there's nowhere left that I can paint that isn't touching another petal. So I'm gonna be patient and allow these things to dry. Even though it's my birthday, I'm actually off uh, teaching martial arts this evening. So whilst these petals are drying, I'm gonna be going off and um, finding my uniform and weapons and other such stuff like that. So the very last thing I'm going to do is this very dark area in the middle. So you want very strong paint here. If you are worried that you can't paint neatly enough or if it just goes a little bit scruffy while you're painting it, you could use a watercolour pencil or even a fine liner pen, preferably in a brown, not a black, just to, uh, just to sort that out. Now the outside edges are still somewhat scruffy. That will clean up as I put the background in. I'm not including that in this tutorial. Um, let me know if you want to see it. I mean, really it can be done very simply indeed. And this little dark center is going to make all the difference to the flower. So do let me know in the comments if you're going to have a go at this painting. Now, later on this spring, I will actually be launching a, uh, a watercolor flower painting course. Now, all of my courses, when they first launch, they have a big discount. So the way to find out about that is to make sure that you're either in my Facebook group or on my mailing list, preferably both. Now, the way to get on my mailing list, you can just pop into the video description and grab some free stuff. So I've got free downloadable PDFs. I've even got free courses that you can take. That will get you on my mailing list. It's not invasive. I send, you know, a maximum of one email per week. Occasionally, if there's a sale on, you might get two or three emails. But generally speaking, there's just one email a week. I always try and give lots of value. Also remind you about the latest uh, YouTube video in case you missed that. So there's always free stuff in there as well. And also let me know in the comments if there are any other simple flowers or other subjects that you'd like me to cover. And if you're interested in painting and drawing flowers, I'll put another video up for you to watch right now.